If someone had a cardiac arrest right in front of you, would you know what to do? I mean, besides calling 911. Many of us have a defibrillator in our workplaces, and some of us have been trained to use it. But as we told you earlier, CBC News has documents showing more than 500 cases of the devices failing over a five-year period. CBC Medical Specialist Dr. Carl Cabasel is here to tell us more, though first, Dr. Carl, tell us exactly how a defib defibrillator works and why it's such a hard word to say, but <laughs> exactly how does it work? Well, basically what it does is it delivers a shock when it's appropriate, an electrical shock to the heart when the heart's not beating effectively. So normally in the healthy heart, electricity is flowing from top to bottom, causing a, a, a coordinated contraction of the muscle. When that's not working, the heart's not pumping properly, blood doesn't get to the body. And that's what this here machine is uh, supposed right. to do. Okay, and so tell us a little bit about, first of all, it would become very obvious to you if someone was suffering from some kind of cardiac arrest, well, right? Well, that's right. They fall down, they may pass out, uh, they may grab their chest before they fall down. There are a lot of different signs. The beauty of these automated machines, though, is that it can diagnose what's going on. Once you get the pads on the chest, it tells you if this is a, a, the kind of rhythm that needs a shock. So you're not going to hurt somebody by using this. Okay, so tell us a little bit about how, in fact, you do use these. Sure, well, you get, the, uh, you get it out. Okay. It actually talks to you, Stay which is calm. one. Tells Check you to... responsiveness. You see that? Call for help. Okay. Mm -hmm. So attach defib pads to patients for a chest. Put the pads on the chest. Okay. Now it has reminded you to call for help because you can do all of this, but if the ambulance isn't on the way, you may lose the patient eventually. Attach defib pads to patients for a chest. Okay. So you okay. put the pads on. Touch patient. Tells Analyze you to... it. Okay. It, it's now looking. It's listening, uh, watching for electrical activity, and it'll instruct Don't us. Don't touch patient. Analyze it. Okay. Okay. So it just keeps giving you these instructions. Shock advised. Now it's telling you a Don't shock is needed. Patient. Don't press touch. Flashing shock button. And there's a button right here. It tells you. You press it. Shock delivered. But you start make, CPR. You make sure everybody's clear. I see. Because you don't want I them see. to be electrocuted. And then you start CPR. You push on the chest, and it actually tells you on the pad where to put your hands to so do you your compression. Like just like you're doing, right yeah. in the middle of the chest. That's and it. So it's really quite simple in terms of. But the issue is, is that there are a lot of uh, these devices that don't seem to be working, right? And that, I guess, is somewhat worrisome from a medical perspective. These yes. devices, as a doctor, you're probably thrilled that they're in public places, but yes. hearing, as CBC News has learned, that they're not working, that's problematic. Right? Well, it is. And, and just like, let's say, uh, you know, an airplane, we, we know that we can't afford for airplanes to fail. And so what do we do? Vigilance, maintenance. We check the, the parts, the batteries. Same with these machines. They need regular maintenance. They need regular checks because you want to make sure the battery is alive and working and you want to make sure that there's no problem with these machines. When they're rolled out of the factory and if they're approved by Health Canada, they are in a position to function and there's a high standard for them. But once they leave, you've got to do the maintenance if you're responsible for I'm it. I'm a little bit of a techno skeptic. Okay. So, you know, if I were to, if something like this were to happen in our newsroom and I grabbed that machine and I pressed a button and it didn't seem to be working, I would get become frustrated immediately and you don't mm. want to become over reliant on this. That's correct. So then what do you do? You go back to the old fashioned way, right? Well, that's right. So ideally, as many people as possible should be trained with in, in CPR and also trained in how to use these machines and how the two things go together. But if if you think of it this way, the defibrillator is is trying to restart a heart that's not working. But if the heart's not working, it's not pumping blood through the body. So you've got to help to move the blood through the body, feed the brain, feed the organs, keep the person alive. That's where the compressions are pushing blood, physically pushing blood mm -hmm. out of the heart into the body. And that is so crucial. So if you don't have a defibrillator, keep doing those uh, compressions. All right, so then we're just getting some information on the screen there where it just gives us all the little details every minute. Well, that's right. Every, when it comes to someone's heart that has stopped working effectively, every second counts in saving their lives. Get the ambulance on the way, call 911, start the compressions, and if you have a defibrillator, set it up and let it do its job. Okay, so just the final question to you, you alluded to it, I let you answer it in part, and then I probably interrupted you, but okay. I was asking you a little bit about what it is that disturbs you most about the story, CBC News learning that in a number of cases, these defibrillators mm. are defective, they are not working, mm -hmm. and in some cases, people actually die. That's right. We, you know what, I think we need to know more about the why these things happen because with proper maintenance, these machines really should work well. And we also have to make the distinction between them failing and them not delivering a shock, which may be appropriate. When you put the pads on and it does the diagnosis, if, if no shock is required, it's not going to give a shock and that's the right thing. But other than that, yes, we need to make sure that whoever's responsible for these machines is on top of the maintenance, doing daily checks, just visual checks of the machine, and doing regular checks of the battery. 
maybe once a week, maybe once a month. And there are some other technical things that the companies that make these machines uh, will sometimes come in to do to make sure it's working. Because I have a funny feeling there aren't a lot of people in a lot of different offices in this country that know how that works or even, even, even knows where that is. I think you, you raise a good point. Putting a piece of plastic on the wall is not going to save lives. We've got to use the machines properly and we've got to maintain the machines properly. Dr. Carl, good to talk to you. Thanks very much. CBC Medical Specialist Dr. Carl Cabasal.